we just got yet another update for Madden 24. Now, this happened about a couple days ago, but with it being the weekend and the playoffs going on, I wasn't able to get the video out a little bit sooner, but we have some more updates to go over today. Now, of course, a little bit earlier in the week, we got a big title update for the game, which we'll talk a bit about that as well, because there was something that happened in that update that we need to talk about. But I already did a video on that. We got some gameplay updates. We got crossplay officially in franchise mode as well. If you happen to miss that previous video, crossplay is officially live. We've talked about it for about a couple months now, and it's finally in Madden 24 for franchise mode. So if you are in a franchise league, you can now invite players from different consoles, from PlayStation to Xbox to even PC to now be in the same league. But keep in mind, they did say that it still is in a beta phase. It's a live beta phase for everybody that has the game. So just kind of keep that in mind. They could have to turn it off at times to maybe tweak it. It's not 100% officially just in the game as a whole in terms of it being completely tested and ready to go. This is more of a bigger testing phase where they're testing it with everybody who actually has the game instead of doing a private test. So just keep that in mind that might be better to maybe stay away from it in a league that you've already been running for a while. But if you're starting new leagues, it'd be a good place to test that out. Now, also in this update, we did see them change some things with fatigue on defense, specifically for blitzing defense. Defensive backs, which we know is a popular thing that we see in Madden. People like to blitz their defensive backs off the edge. And basically the idea here is it's supposed to fatigue them if they're going up against much bigger offensive linemen play after play to where they're not going to be at full stamina every play, thus making the blitzes not as good. But it does seem like this is kind of affecting just defense as a whole, which not really a shocker. I mean, it's one of those things where EA tries to make kind of a weird change and it doesn't go quite as intended so I'm hearing a lot of fatigue on defense in general even just from regular pass rushers like big edge rushers and just players on defense in general which is kind of doing the opposite of what it intended to do which is now it's making defense much worse instead of just kind of trying to single out one aspect of defense so that's something I'm sure they're going to be looking into over the next week or two and maybe even reversing that patch because it does kind of seem like that might be the right thing to do. Now, in terms of the new update that we just got a couple days later, they have finally updated the Play Now Live for the second time this year. I know a lot of people really care about this feature for franchise mode as they like to start newer leagues later in the season and they want to start kind of at the live up-to-date point of the current NFL season. Now, back in the day, you know, a couple years ago, they used to update this literally every single week and they've never really come out and said why they don't do it every week anymore but as of last year they only started doing it a few times a year which to me just kind of makes the entire feature useless if you're not going to update it every week I mean there's only so many weeks in an NFL season as well this isn't like NBA where they do that in 2k and it's much harder because you have so many more games so many more weeks of a season but either way the last update for play now live was at week 10 it is now officially set to the wild card round so you can start basically as of yesterday before yesterday's games if you want to go into a new franchise mode and start with the up-to-date season which is pretty good now really quickly before we continue i do want to shout out today's video sponsor underdog fantasy and with the playoffs being here there's no better time than to play pick them on underdog fantasy because they give out free plays and they give you free money to play with so for today's games they're going to actually give you a free play if you sign up of matthew Stafford to get a single yard that means all he has to do is get one yard and his play will hit and if you sign up for underdog fantasy using my code ray ray they'll also double your first deposit up to hundred dollars meaning you get hundred free dollars to play with and what their pick them game basically is is you have a bunch of different player stats you pick higher or lower and if you know sports this really isn't that hard at all and if you get them right you can win some big money so again make sure to sign up using my code ray get the free matthew stafford play and the 100 dollars deposit match you just can't beat it now let's get into this week roster update and you might see some more movement in this roster update based on the entire season and not just last week as this is the last roster update of the regular season we'll definitely get some during the playoffs but this is the last regular season roster update meaning they're going to take kind of the whole season into account a little bit with some of these moves and not just last week so let's start with the players who are going up first we've got Tristan Wirfs going up plus one to a 94 overall we have his teammate Antoine Winfield Jr. going up plus one to a 92 overall overall Christian Darasaw is going up plus two to a 90 overall so now he's kind of officially in that 90 elite range Khalil Mack is going up plus one to a 90 overall he's now back officially in the 90 elite range now of course he's been much higher than this in the past in his prime but this year I mean he kind of like channeled that inner prime again and he's just been going absolutely nuts he's one of the top three or four sack getters in the whole league this year which has been pretty impressive We've got Derek Brown going up plus two to an 89 overall young player having his best season. We've got Alex Highsmith going up plus two to an 88 overall. Bobby Wagner is going up plus one to an 88 overall. And then we've got 
Deron Bland and Elton Jenkins also going up plus one to an 88. We've got Jonathan Taylor going up plus one to an 87 overall. Derek Stingley Jr., who's finally having his breakout year in year two, he's going up plus one to an 86 overall. Braden Smith is going up plus one to an 85 overall. And then we've got Darius Williams, JC Horn, and Taylor Decker also going up plus one to an 85. And here we have Xavier McKinney having a really big boost this week. Again, this is kind of a full season update here. He's going up plus three to an 85 overall, and I believe this is the highest he's ever been rated. Brees Hall had a really good second year. He's going up plus one to an 84 overall. Feel like he should probably be a little bit higher, though. It seems like, I mean, if the team is fully healthy and they have Aaron Rodgers out there, his numbers would probably be even better because, you know, he would see less activity in the box on the defensive side. So, like, even with all that considered, he's had such a great second year. I feel like he should be a little bit higher. Now, we've got some other guys going up plus one to an 84 as well. We've got Devon Witherspoon, the rookie who had a great year, Eric McCoy, and Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. We've got Brian Branch going up plus one to an 83 overall. And then we've got Ed Oliver and the rookie Puka Nakua also going up plus one to an 83. I feel like Puka should be higher as well. I mean, I know he's a rookie and they don't usually boost rookies up so high, but he's just been phenomenal this year. Would be rookie of the year if not for CJ Stroud, but his numbers have just been one of the best we've seen from a rookie receiver. So I feel like he should be a little bit higher. We've got Julian Love going up plus three to an 83 overall. Quincy Williams going up plus two to an 83 overall. We've got Donovan Wilson going up plus one to an 82 overall. And then we've got Mitch Morse, Paulson Adebo, and Ryan Kelly also going up plus one to an 82. Devin Lloyd's going up plus one to an 81 overall. And then we've also got Nico Collins going up plus one to an 81, having a big breakout year in his third year. But he also got the rare speed and acceleration increase, which we don't typically see happen too often. He's going up plus two in his speed, and he's now 92 speed. He's also going up plus two in his acceleration, and he's now 93 acceleration. And so kind of getting him up to where he should be after the big breakout year. And he had another big game yesterday, so he'll probably be going up yet again. We've got Devin Singletary going up plus one to an 80 overall. And then we've got Jalen Petrie, Joey Porter Jr., Logan Cook, and Orlando Brown also going up plus one to an 80. And then we've got Kyle Van Noy, who's going up plus two to an 80 overall. Now let's talk about the players who are going down, starting with Nick Chubb going down one to a 96 overall, which is kind of surprising to me. They do this a lot with players who get injured and don't play for a while. Doesn't really make sense to me. He barely played any games this year, got hurt early on. We know he's one of the best running backs in the league. Just kind of weird to just knock him down one when he hasn't played almost all year. We've got Patrick Sertan going down one to a 95 overall. Chris Lindstrom going down one to a 92 overall. We've also got Darius Slay and Demario Davis going down 1 to a 92. Kevin Byard's going down 1 to a 91 overall. Creed Humphrey's going down 1 to a 90 overall. Daniil Hunter's going down 1 to a 89 overall. Micah Hyde is going down 1 to a 88 overall. Von Miller is also going down 1 to a 88. Harrison Smith's going down 1 to a 87 overall. And then we've got Jeffrey Simmons and Joey Bosa also going down 1 to a 87. Joey Bosa, another guy that I don't believe has played in some time. And then we've got Jalen Hurts going down 2 to a 87 overall. He was mostly moving up this year, but the last few weeks have been rough. Now he's hurt as well. So kind of curious to see how that game is going to play out tomorrow with the Bucks. Definitely does not sound like he's going to be close to 100%. So kind of looking tough for the Eagles. They're also going to be without A.J. Brown as well. So that's going to be pretty rough. We've got Alvin Kamara going down 1 to 86 overall. Colton Miller and Tariq Woolen are also going down 1 to 86. Chase Young is going down 1 to 85 overall. Rashawn Gary is also going down 1 to 85. James Bradbury having a rough year. He's going down 1 to 83 overall. Tyson Campbell is also going down 1 to 83. Austin Eckler's had a rough year as well. He's going down 2 to 82 overall to end the year. Jalen Carter is going down 1 to 81 overall. And then we've got Michael Thomas, Brandon Aubrey, and Geno Stone also going down 1 to an 81. Now, hey, if you missed out on the big title update a few days ago, make sure you check out this important video right here on the screen.